Yeah! We are live on YouTube running through a giant mock draft. This is 12 teams, but it's 20 rounds. We haven't gone this deep in a minute. Pause. This mock draft is for the big dog bash. We have started a 1,200-team fantasy football league popping off this summer. You probably saw me announce it in yesterday's video as well as Wednesday's video and all that sheesh. We will put the link to find out everything you want to know about the bash down below. BigDogBash.com, whitelist, all that good stuff down below if you want to join us. We are going to take the settings for that league and do a mock draft based on those settings. A super flex league. We have one starting quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, two normal flexes, the super flex spot. There will be no kickers. There will be no defenses. We're going to run the trailer for the Big Dog Bash in about five seconds. We will also have timestamps. So if you just want to skip right to the mock draft, love you for that. We're re-uploading this after we are live right now because we do our live mock drafts and we give the link out to the people in our Discord, also linked down below, so they could hang out with us, et cetera, et cetera. And then we re-upload it as a video because YouTube likes regular videos more than they like lives. Any whomst, here's the trailer for the Big Dog Bash. Skip it if you want. Skip it if there's something wrong with you. Skip it if you're an idiot. But join us if you're not. My name is Nick Ercolano, and I'm here to introduce y'all to the Big Dog Bash. This is a 1,200 person fantasy football league with a grand prize that's so awesome, it's gonna blow your brains to fucking smithereens. The goal of the Big Dog Bash, super simple. It's become the most engaging, anticipated, and documented high stakes fantasy football league in the world. The only way to get into the bash with a bash pass, BDG's own very first NFT. In this room right here, in my mom's house, about six years ago, I started this media company, BDGE, or Big Dogs Gotta Eat. And what I did not know at the time was between then and right now, the culmination of all the work we would do as a company would lead us right here to the Big Dog Bash. This is easily the most ambitious project that we have tried to tackle as a company up to date. So what is the recipe for the bash? 1,200 teams, 100 leagues, 12 people in each league. Redraft style, baby. And huge fucking prizes. I mean, we're gonna be giving away ridiculous things monthly, weekly, even daily. Someone's going to the NCAA National Championship game. Someone else is getting sent to the NBA playoffs. And there's gonna be someone leaving the bash with season tickets to their favorite team. That's not even the grand prize. And the coolest part about the bash is all of it's gonna be documented. All we do is make content here at BDGE. Some people might say it's the only thing that we're actually good at doing. And in 2022, almost all of the content that we do make is gonna be centered around the bash. Content that you might be in. We know your favorite analysts, your favorite creators, and just overall people will be. Hold up. I gotta verify that real quick. Just got done with a run and uh, I think I'm ready to bash. Let's do it. I'm in. Bash me. BDGE country. Let's bash. Let's bash it up, boys. I'm totally down. Let's bash. Let's bash, baby. Let's bash. What the fuck is up? I'm in. Let's bash, baby. Oh, yeah, you know, okay. I'm ready to bash some skulls. Let's bash, bitches. Let's bash, bitches. So here's the real kicker. If you own the Big Dog Bash NFT, you are getting entry into the Big Dog Bash for three years. You wanna sell that shit after year one and recoup your money? Fantastic. I don't really care. I'd love to have you stay for all three years, but it's your NFT and it is up to you. Now, remember that grand prize I mentioned earlier. The winner of the Big Dog Bash is going home with 10,000 shares of BDGE. You're gonna own a piece of our company with zero strings attached. And now you're probably sitting there like, what is an NFT? How do I buy crypto? Are these leagues full PPR? Are they half PPR? What are the settings? And most importantly, how the fuck do I get into the Big Dog Bash immediately? All you gotta do is head over to bigdogbash.com. Any questions you have related to the Big Dog Bash is covered right here on this website, all of it. Or maybe this idea is trash and we should just throw it all away.
wonderful. We're bike. Here's how the big dog bash is set up. There's a little bit of nuance to it. Weeks one through 12 is the regular season. Every one of the 1,200 people are placed into a fantasy league, right? A normal 12-person fantasy league. So you're competing against 11 other people. The winner of that league, the first place guy, and I think we actually might be swapping the rules around a little bit. We might have a championship matchup in week 12 of the top two seeds. The winner of each 100 regular season leagues moves on to the bash, which is weeks 13 through 17. Now, it does it, it moves from your normal head-to-head matchups each week to a tournament style. So in week 13, you've got 100 people left, all right? 100 people left competing in the bash. In week 13, the 50 highest scoring teams will move on to week 14. The 20 highest scoring teams will move on to week 15. Then the 10 highest scoring teams will move on to week 16. And guess what? The top two teams will move on to the championship week of the Big Dog Bash. Week 17, we're flying your asses out here to New York to watch the games with us in the HQ on that Sunday. The winner will be crowned. It's a beautiful, normal, head-to-head matchup for the championship of the big dog. That's how this shit is going down. So you might want to plan it a little bit different. Diff- different strategies going into it, knowing that when weeks 13 through 17 hits, you're looking for the highest scoring teams during that time span. Do you start to look at the schedule a little bit more? Do you fade players that have buys in weeks 13 and 14? I don't even know who has buys right now. As we dip a little bit more into strategy for the tournament, we will uncover these things. But these are things to start thinking about now if you want to join the bash. And if you want to win the bash, if you want to lose the bash, I mean, shout out to you. That's what I'm probably going to be doing. I'm just going to be sitting back, relax, be happy with the seventh place finish. I'm ready to jump into the mock draft. Let me put it on the screen. The uh, bash will be held on Sleeper. And I know, again, you guys probably have a million questions about the Big Dog Bash, how to get in it, what are the league rules, all that kind of stuff. All of it is covered on the website, bigdogbash.com. There's an FAQ page with all of these things listed. I am going to take the uh, eighth pick. No particular reason. I just figured it is the pick that you guys would get least mad about. Let's start the draft. JTM. Lakers, you are on the clock. What do we got going on in the chat here? Yeah, y'all are yelling. Yes, I should have. Yes, correct. So again, this is a super flex. Uh, 20 roster spots because waiver shut off once we hit the actual bash, right? Weeks 13 through 17. We can't be doing waiver wires because players are coming from all over different leagues. And the other, you know, 10 players who aren't competing anymore are not fucking around with the waiver wire. So we can't uh we can't allow that for you guys. So we have Jonathan Taylor, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. I'm really interested to see people's strategies in the bash. This is a half PPR league for everybody. So running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, they all get half a point per reception. We do have three wide receiver starting spots though. So it's, uh, it means the demand for them will be a little bit more increased, obviously, because that means, you know, not only the top 24 are going to be in starting lineups, but the top 36. So it scarcely smacks down the position a little bit. Okay, so I'm sitting at the 108. We have Taylor, Josh Allen, Mahomes, C-Mac, Austin Eckler off the board. I'm going to actually look up the bye weeks right now and see what teams we have. Joe Burrow at the 106. Come on, fall to me, baby. You know you want to. Hey, damn, I wanted Herbert there, but I'm probably going to let quarterback slide a little bit here. You know, we want ceiling plays. We really, really do. Do we have the schedule up here for them? No, they have last year's schedule. Um, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson. I- I'm very open to the, to the idea of drafting a wide receiver first this year. I'm really open to it as opposed to other years. However, however. We're starting to love Dalvin Cook. We are starting to fall bike in love with Mr. Dalvin Cook. I think that this Minnesota offense is going to be way more friendly to this man. I think we're going to get him way more involved in the passing side of things. I think he has a chance to set his career high in uh, targets and receptions. And listen, I think that that helps him stay a little bit healthier. I don't want Dalvin Cook taking 20 carries up the middle every game. I mean, I do, but I don't think he can stay healthy doing it. You know, I think if we, you know, substitute 50 rushes or 60 rushes for 30 targets instead, I would be ecstatic about that. Get him in space more. He's a very elusive back. He's a breakaway guy. Get him in space more and he's going to make magic. I think it, I think it makes him healthier with less touches and less touches up the middle. So Dalvin Cook in the offense, 
this year in Minnesota, it's going to be a little bit different, a little more pass heavy. I am very excited about. Plus, he gives me the upside that uh, not many players have in fantasy football. He has legit league winning upside. When he's on the field, his fantasy points per game number is of the league winning stature, right? 22, 23 fantasy points per game. You really only get that from JT, McCaffrey, and guys like that. After Cook, we had Cup, J. Jeff, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Kyler Murray, Jamar Chase, and Jalen Hurts. Some really good players still left on the board, as there fucking should be. It's in 204. Najee Harris off the board. So I'm sitting here on the clock. I'm debating between Russ. You guys know I love Russ. I uh, made the video yesterday about guys who like busted last year, but I think will be biking full fucking steam this upcoming year. Kelsey could be a big difference maker because Tyree Kill's gone, so he could see 160 targets this year, which I think is probably worth considering. I kind of really fuck with Stefan Diggs this year. I'm getting a little bit higher and higher and higher and more higher on him as well. Uh, you know what? Let's go with Russ here, and we'll get our first quarterback because, again, this is a super flex league. Also, you guys can feel free to drop like questions or anything you got, whether it's player-related, draft-related, Big Dog Bash-related, uh, in the comments on YouTube, and I'll throw them up on the screen and try to answer them. But with Russ, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited with Russ, man. I, again, I talked about it in the last video. Uh, he was quarterback 16 in fantasy last year, but you can't forget what he did in the four years prior to that, or just his entire fucking career as a quarterback. Eight, six, three, one on a team that was slow-paced, on a team that didn't pass the ball. And now he's moving over to Denver, where the system's going to be more friendly. The offensive line is going to be more friendly to him. Um, all this stuff is going to be just so far upgraded for Russ. And he's a guy who didn't need upgrades in order to be fucking awesome in fantasy to begin with. Stefan Diggs, Travis Kelsey, yeah, it's uh, par for the course. Stefan Diggs, I'm, I'm getting more and more in tune with, man. I really like, uh, I really like the idea of. I think we're like underplaying just how open the depth chart is there in Buffalo, right? Like Diggs was, uh, he had a little bit of a down year. I think they missed a lot of deep throws that like are not the normal case for Allen Diggs. I think they left like 300 yards on the field. Um, and now Sanders is gone. Cole Beasley's gone. Yes, they they did bring in some other guys, right? They re-signed McKenzie. They, they drafted Khalil Shaker, fifth-round pick, um, Jameson Crowder and stuff. But I feel like they're kind of throwing things against the wall and hoping one or them work out. But we already knew that Sanders and uh, Beasley did work out. So I think that's like the ceiling case for competition for him. And then Gabriel Davis, man, he might be good. He might really not be good. He might really not be good. And if that, even if Gabriel Davis is good, cool. That's a second uh, target competition. But if he's not good, then it's Stefan Diggs probably getting 180. I think Diggs has a real, real chance to finish as the wide receiver one overall this year because we already know what he is. We know he's tied to the best court, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And, uh, and he's just fucking incredible, dude. Really, really like Diggs. I think he's not getting enough respect as one of those top receivers. After Diggs, we have Kelsey, Stafford, Mixon, Nick Chubb. Can you trade draft picks? No, you cannot. There will be no trading whatsoever. Very, very similar to the Scott Fishbowl style, which I think works well. At first, I was really against it. I was like, damn, this is stupid. You can't trade. Uh, the problem is like that is, is just so, so easy to collude that way. We're trying to set this league up where it's really fun and engaging, but we give the lowest percentage chance of collusion being allowed. Right. So only uh, if you have your MetaMask or Coinbase wallet, there is only one. Uh, you can only mint one on mint day, one NFT bash pass per wallet. Uh, there's no trading allowed because it's it's just too fucking easy to collude. And then uh, and then you, each player that goes onto the waiver wire has to sit there for at least 24 years or 20 has to sit there for 24 years. Big dog bash 2047. You can go pick up Kulil Shaker after we drop them. Uh, 24 hours. So in that case, like if you have a friend in your league or whatever, and you drop a player at like 1 a.m. and be like, hey, pick him up for this, you know, this morning's waiver wire. I uh, can't do that because he's got to sit there for at least 24 hours. So we're trying to make it as collusion proof as possible, which is you, you j we just can't allow trades. It's just it's too black and white there. After Nick Chubb, we had Saquon at 211, Brady, DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift at three ones a nice fucking nice fucking value play. Dak Prescott, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Mark Andrews, Devontae Adams, Leonard Fournette. And I, oh, shit. I'm bike up on the clock. Kamara sitting there. Javante, CeeDee Lamb. CD Lamb's falling to me at the 308. Wow, I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't take a wide receiver because now I get a real legit wide receiver one uh with CD here. I can't make the case strong enough for CD, man. Like I really, 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 really am in love with this dude this year. 
Offense passes too much. They're too fast-paced, and they get rid of all their weapons. I was looking at Lance, who goes off the board right behind me. Lance is a guy that feels like he could make or break teams in the bash this year. He's so high upside that by the end of the season, he you know he could be a guy that's putting up 25 to 30 fantasy points per game. So Lance is a guy. I wish I could have multiple teams in the bash so I could like fuck around with different strategies, but Lance is a guy I'm going to seriously consider um, when the bash actually rolls around with my like third-round pick. Mike Evans at 310 is a great fucking value, too. Alan Kamara at the 311. Guys, I, I, this is sexy, Pats. I'm not even going to. He's an idiot. There's no, there's no talking sense into him. Debo at the 312. Her cousins at the 4 1. Ah, there we go. Sexy actually made a good pick. 4 2. So Javante four, falling into the fourth feels like a uh, just absolute easy smash. He's, he's a guy that also can have like a league winning break towards the end of the year. You want guys last five weeks of the season. That's when like most breakout plays happen. Uh, if you have Javante Williams being like the workhorse there for the last five weeks of the season, he could probably win you the bash. So he's a guy I'll keep my eye on very, very closely. Uh, the other running backs I'm not in love with. I guess I don't hate James Conner here. I took him in the third round of last week's mock draft. So this is, you know, I get a whole nother round discount. Keenan Allen and T Higgins. I kind of like too. Uh, we didn't take a tight end yet. I think I'd rather I think I'd rather go with um I'm gonna go with T. Higgins here and grab my wide receiver two over Keenan Allen. There's I don't think there's much difference between the, the wide receivers here, you know, T. Higgins, Keenan Allen, etc. Uh I think if I don't know. I feel like if, if Mike Williams were to get hurt, Keenan Allen's upside I don't think really changes much. But if like Jamar Chase gets hurt, I think T. Higgins has, you know, top five wide receiver upside. So I'll look that way. We got a safe play, a floor play, as well as some upside there. Um, all the wide receivers are, are kind of the same in terms of what they're going to give to your fantasy team at half point PPR at this point. All right, let's get back to some of the questions. Yeah, so no, I have 104. I want to trade back. Could I do that? You cannot. All in the FAQ and league rules section on the website. Oh, interesting. JT and AJ by weeks 14. I don't know who AJ is. AJ Dillon. Uh, so weeks 13, we have Arizona, Carolina on a bye. Weeks 14, we have Atlanta, Chicago, Green Bay, Indianapolis, New Orleans, and Washington on a bye. And that's it. So we have teams. We have, I think that was seven or eight teams with buys in weeks 13 and 14. I'm not going to say it makes those guys undraftable, but it makes it very difficult to advance if your best players are on by those weeks. But that's where the strategy comes into play, where you're probably needing to look at, you know, which like under the radar players have really strong matchups in weeks 13 and 14, which backup running back can make a dent by then like the Damian Pierce, right? Like who's who's he got? And by weeks 13, 14, he should have carved out a nice fucking role. And Houston plays, OK, Dallas in week. No, they play Cleveland in week 13, Dallas week 14. Eh, not exactly great matchups, but those are things you got to start thinking about, you know? Um, do we, you know, do you start targeting wide receiver twos or threes in an offense where they have shootout matchups those weeks, right? Um, like Denver plays KC in week 14. Do you, you know, do you draft a guy like KJ Hamler with the hopes that he plays a big role? there and then he plays KC in week 14 you know what I mean like that's that's the kind of strategy we gotta be thinking about almost bike up on the clock here quarterbacks quarterbacks are ugly right now man the QB situation is ugly Mike Williams good pick there I like that there's some wide receivers I really still like on the board but I don't think any of them offer the upside that Travis Etienne does here actually there's a few running backs that have some really solid upside right now uh, I'm going to go with ETN though. ETN at five, eight feels beautiful to me. I love the upside of ETN. I love, um, I, I think he's got the possibility to catch like 65 to 70 passes this year, man. And he doesn't have to be that good in the running game. If he could do that, him and Trevor obviously have the chemistry going back to college where he caught a ton of fucking passes from him. I like the Waller pick right after that though. I do like uh Waller. Well, there's a guy that listen, you're going to get him in fifth round and you're going to argue back and forth and bicker with people that his target share is going to come down too much. At the end of the day, like you're getting a, an incredibly awesome solid tight end in Darren Waller in the and at the end of the fifth round. Like you're not going to regret taking Darren Waller there. He's going to be a nice steep staple piece of your fucking team, you know? What do you think about Singletary? Uh, I don't want him. I made the video last week that was like if you're going to draft Clyde Edwards Hilaire, dry draft Devin Singletary instead. That was not me like putting a stake on the ground saying I like Singletary. It was more like Clyde is a really bad pick. Devin Singletary is in an extremely similar situation, but you're getting him cheaper, even though I still think he's kind of a bad pick. 
aren't the draft picks tied to the NFT or nah? Yes. So I will uh, actually let me bring this up if I have it saved to my computer right now. You know what? We could actually go to. If you go to the Big Dog Bash website, you'll see them kind of littered all over here. Like this is what one of the NFTs will look like. The, the artwork's not final. We just had to put something in place for it. But you will see the league number as well as your draft pick right here. So this is obviously just a template, but league one number 100, and then you're the 101. So that's your NFT for the three years. You could obviously sell it on the secondary marketplace and then buy a different one if you wanted to move into like a rare league. Um, obviously those are going to be a little bit more expensive than the other ones. If you, you know, go into the secondary marketplace, but the, the, the market dynamics of how the big dog bash is going to work is going to be so fucking cool. It's going to be so, so, so cool. And that's what I'm most interested to see, right? Like that's the cool part about having the NFT tied to it is we have the secondary marketplace where you can, where you'll be able to filter teams by, you know, their records throughout the year, by the players they have in their lineup. And you can kind of pick and choose if you want to buy a different team, if you want to spend up for the rare league, et cetera. And, uh, my girl, what's up? Oh, we're almost back on the clock here. We've got Animal in here chirping. Fade Animal. Facts. Terrible pick. You're a terrible fucking pick. You're fired. Do you get a different draft pick each year? No. That NFT is what you have each year. You're in the same league with the same draft pick, but you have the ability again to move around. Oh, shit. We're on the clock. Sixth round. This is where I'd start looking at J.K. Dobbins, even though like in the video we're about to put out whenever Ike finishes. Uh, oh, 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 okay. We're going to need our second quarterback here because this is super flex and those things are starting to wind down. Dude, I like Matt Ryan this year, man. I think he's going to be one of the more underrated uh, late round quarterbacks that you can get. Six round in a super flex. He's going to be really safe. He's going to give you 17 to 18 points per game. The setup in Atlanta was terrible. Our offensive line stunk. We didn't have any weapons for him to throw to. Of course, he was going to fall off. His his arm, is he's got a noodle arm, okay? But so did Phillip Rivers when he threw for 4,300 yards and 30 touchdowns with the Colts a couple of years ago. Matt Ryan's going to have a similar year to Phillip Rivers, if not a better year. I think he's going to have a better year. I think he'll be a, an extremely usable, like Kirk Cousins-esque fantasy player this year. And I love the value of Matt Ryan. Um, can you explain the rare league? Yes. So out of the 100 regular season leagues, there are going to be five rare leagues. In order for it to be a rare league, you will be in a league with one of five BDG team members. It is myself. It is Animal. It is Noah Hills, Fake Intern Tony, and Stevie One Chains. If you get in one of those leagues, and the leagues will be leagues one, two, three, four, or five. The first five leagues are the five rare leagues. If you get in that, you're getting into what we consider a rare league. Now, the rare league, what that's made of is that the, the winner of the rare league, right, just weeks one through 12, will get a grand prize given to them. I'm giving each person, each uh, BDGE employee or team member, right now we're set at $2,000 for them to give you guys a gift or a, a prize, whatever. I'm allowing them to. This is what I think is going to be fun, creative, and flexible with it. I'm like straight up, I'm just going to give Animal $2,000, $2,500, whatever it is, and say like, listen, you get to choose what the grand prize winner of your league gets. Um, and depending on how many we mint out, if we end up selling the 1,200, the full 1,200 spots, then we will probably increase and raise the amount of um, prizes that we give out and shit. We had to go on the safer side because we didn't know if there was going to be 300 people, 600 people that minted, right? And we only have that one initial payday up front to work off of it. So these things will get increasingly better and better and better. Um, so the rare leagues are one of those five BDG employees are in it, and you actually win like a big time grand prize if you win the regular season of that league. And if you win that, you also move on to the bash, and all the 100 regular season winners will also get a prize. And then you know you continue to compete in the tournament along with it. If that makes sense. Okay, so after Matt Ryan, we had Tua go off the board. Uh, J.K. Dobbins at six seven, I think, is a really really nice you know balance of risk and upside. Uh, Dobbins with the ACL is definitely risky, but. You know, we saw him score eight touchdowns over the last eight games of his rookie season. Like, we know what he can be in this offense. We have uh, Trevor Lawrence after that. Dalton Schultz at 6'9 is a wonderful value. Jalen Waddell at 6'10. Jerry Judy, 6'11. Uh, we have Chris Godwin, Mac Jones, Allen Robinson at 7'2. Damn. Yeah, I really like uh, Aiden's team is stacked. Tannehill, Cooper, Brandon Cooks. So Aiden at the 102 grabbed Josh Allen, Saquon, uh, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Mike Pittman, Jerry Judy, Allen Robinson. I love that like five, six, seven stack that you got right there with those wide receivers. I I think um, you know, depending on how you feel about certain players, 
I don't know if most people are going to love those running backs, but that will be a, a really nice. Um, sorry, that will be a really nice stack there. Like if you went, you know, some people would like Swift over Barkley. If you started with like Josh Allen, DeAndre Swift, Dak Prescott, people in the fantasy industry would be fucking nothing everywhere. All right, we are bike on the clock. We have two wide receivers. We have two running backs. And realistically, at this point, we can kind of start looking at any player um, because we are moving into the flex area. Don't love any of the guys right now. I do kind of fuck with Rashad Bateman here, though. Rashad Bateman. I'm on Raw's cool, I guess. I'm gonna go with Rashad Bateman here. I need me, I need me some Rashad Bateman action here. I think the Baltimore offense is going to be so much more um so much more um run heavy this year because their running backs will hopefully be healthy. And I think that's gonna hurt Bateman and uh, all those guys. And that's randomized. Yes. Uh, every single NFT is randomized. If you are not one of those five BG employees, the other 1,195 1, NFTs will be completely fucking random. Like, we're, I'm, I'm giving one to say, like, JJ Zacharyson, right, was in the promo video, and I'm giving him an NFT, but he will, he, he'll get, you know, League 80, the 111 or some shit like that. Completely fucking randomized at the same time for everybody. I'm considering it rare if I get in the snap. Yeah, that, that's the other cool part about it. Like, listen, th there's tiered like rarity within the leagues themselves, right? Like, I think I, I, I think I'm gonna go the uh, tight end here, Zach Ertz. I like Zach Ertz in Arizona. They're gonna have a very limited target share there because Hopkins out for six games. Kirk's obviously gone. Chase Edmonds is gone. Um, so it's gonna be very, very heavy towards Hollywood and probably Zach Ertz over the middle of the field. Uh, I love him as a tight end this year. So eighth round, I'm very happy with that. That's yeah, but that's the cool part about um the rare leagues and, and just having, you know, a bunch of like people that you guys know in them, there's, there's, you know, if you want to play with snacks, like you don't have to pay on the secondary market, the price of getting into a rare league. Cause those are obviously going to be more valuable, but you could still buy that. Um, if someone has it listed. Okay. So after I took, uh, Rashad Bateman, we had, I'm on Ross St. Brown go off Dallas Goddard, Elijah Moore, Miles Sanders, TJ Hawkinson, Zach Wilson, Tony Pollard, Michael Thomas, Zach Ertz, Dawson Knox, Juju Smith-Schuster, and Damian Harris. I'm really interested to see where guys like like Tony Pollard in the eighth round is insane in a normal league. Like I would never suggest you go eighth round Tony Pollard, but he's a guy that I think you know anyone that has legit league winning upside is going to get taken around two rounds, three rounds earlier, just because like whoever gets lucky, whoever is the lucky one that just gets that right break is going to go fucking far in this tourney. How many people are whitelisted so far? You know what? Let's fucking check that together. Shut up, animal. Animal's always like trying to tell me what to do on my live streams. It's probably for the better. Uh, we have about a thousand people whitelisted right now. So we probably have a hunt because we're giving away some to, uh, we're going to do giveaways throughout the summer. Probably if this doesn't fill up and then, uh, you know, other people in the in the audience in the space or whatever. So there's probably realistically only like 100 to 150 spots left. After Ertz, we had Dawson Knox, Juju, Damian Harris, Jameis Winston. I like I like Jameis Winston a lot too down here at the eight nine. And super flex league, man. That's I think he'll be a solid quarterback too with some big upside weeks. Sure, I'll have his shitty fucking three interception weeks, but pretty good for someone who can't see. Clyde, Cordero Patterson, Drake London, Kenneth Walker in the ninth. I think I think uh, Kenneth Walker makes sense around the ninth spot as well, or in the ninth round. Because of his uh, his like down the down the season type of upside. Do the first fifty people who signed up get into the rare league or is rare league numbers randomized? All random, everything random. So you said someone is getting season tickets to their favorite team. What if the team has a long wait list to get tickets? Yeah. So basically, the way it's working is we are giving you guys like a uh, almost like a it's like a gift card to this website. So say you win uh, the th a three thousand dollar prize, right? We're going to give you $3,000 to this website that has like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gift card options. So the money, basically all the prizes that we listed in that video will be able to be bought with the money coinciding with the price, but you'll have the ability to choose whatever you want, right? Like say we give you $3,000 to that, that site, they have StubHub on there, like the ability to purchase a StubHub gift card. Therefore, you can buy $3,000 worth of StubHub points or whatever it is and then buy whatever tickets you want right so you could do it that way you could literally go a thousand dollars subhub thousand dollars to 
Don's thousand dollars, whatever it is. Right. So we, we, we give you the flexibility to actually choose whatever the fuck you want. We just, you know, that was like a way that we found it would be cool to like market it to sports fans. Okay. We are, Oh, we bite. We so bite. Um, Singletary, James Cook. Oh, we got a couple like upside plays here. I think Kareem Hunt and Melvin Gordon both make a little bit of sense here. I made the video about them last week. Uh, I love Olave too. Chase Edmonds and Rashad Penny are guys that I'll be looking at. Let's we'll just go with Chase Edmonds for right now, right? I made the video last week about uh, guys getting drafted as RB threes or fours that I think have like RB one upside, and Chase Edmonds was one of them. Do I believe it's going to happen? Probably not, but he's got the path because he earned a lot of fucking money this offseason, especially relative to Sonny Michelle and um, Raheem Mostert, who they brought in. I don't even know if all those guys are going to make the roster, but Miles Gaskin or one of them will certainly be cut. Um, and then he's the clear pass catcher there because Mostert and Sonny Michelle do not catch passes at all. So it leaves a pretty wide open lane for him to do something. And it was a ninth round pick, so fuck off. Those bash bitches, they have them. Okay, yeah, another point by Animal. Um, they have MasterCard prepaid too, so you're not limited to just stores and chains, correct? Yeah, so it's like you don't have to get a StubHub gift card. You can get a fucking MasterCard gift card and you know use that money wherever you want. So what do you think happens with D-Hop? Because his upside for the first eight weeks is zero points, but he will be back for the bash. Does the stock go up, down, or stay put in this? Um, well, he is – I think he's out for six weeks, not eight, first of all. But, yeah, he's he's a player that might go a little bit higher because people want to take the shot on the upside. He's a guy that I might be interested in if he falls to like, the sixth round. Because, again, you got to remember, these are 20-team rosters. So you're able to stack the back of your roster with players who might – produce for like six weeks but might fall off after that you know so those are guys you should be looking at as well when it comes to this strategy like you might take you you might even take aj green in round like 19 right because he's the wide receiver while deandre hopkins is probably gone so you might take aj green in round like 18 and deandre hopkins in round seven or something like that and have them coincide did i hear you imply there's going to be some way to check on team history etc time more made it dated to the nfts and just ownership or did i make that up uh I'm not sure what you mean by that team history. You uh, clarify that a little bit, Chris. Here's let's see. All right, after Chase, we had Wentz, we had Wentz, Renfro, Fryermuth, Chris Olave. I need to make a pick, so I'm gonna run out of time. Ooh, Al Lazard's looking kind of spicy there. A couple running. I think I might be going like pretty running back heavy because we could start a lot of them in the flex. I, I, I'll tell you what. I am going to be targeting Ramondre Stevenson in this draft. I was going to say in every draft I do, but we can only do one of them, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to make sure I have Ramondre Stevenson. I think he has – I mean, the, the Patriots offense is just so good at running the ball. They're going to run the ball so fucking much this year, and I think Stevenson is the one guy on this roster that has the path to being like the, the workhorse, the RB1 there. So I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Ramondre this year, and he's a guy that I want in this type of tournament. So I, I, to try to answer this question for you, Chris – sorry, some people sort of – league history or further into the past you own i thought i had heard something along the lines of being able to see some sort of league history i'm not really sure what you mean by league history because it's only the first year but by by year three like you will be able, like sleeper does this inherently it's not even something we have to build out but if you've played on sleeper before you could see the league history of the league that you're playing in like the league that we've been on sleeper for like five years i can go back and look at any of the league's history but we will be creating like our in-house development team will be creating a bunch of like tools and stuff for like our, our secondary website where we're going to be tracking like leaderboards for a lot of different like cool quirky stats and stuff. So um, there's going to be a lot of crazy dynamics to the Big Dog Bash, man. I, I promise you all will not be fucking disappointed when all is said and done. This is going to be very, very, very nice. Cassidy asks, when I buy the NFT, will I be able to see what league I'm in in my pick? Um, yes, you will. But it, usually the way NFTs work is like every there's a OK. So for a little clarification, right? Um, you'll hear a lot of NFT buzzwords, right? So you have um, the whitelist. The whitelist for normal people would mean the waiting list or the pre-order list. So if you sign up for the for the whitelist, which will be linked in the description down below, it's on uh, the pre-mint website. If you sign up for the whitelist, that means you're on the pre-order or the waiting list. The mint day is aka the purchase day. So we are collecting all the pre-orders right now. You don't actually have to buy anything. You just got to hook up your MetaMask wallet. Then on mint day, purchase day, that'll be August 10th, I believe we have it set for. That is when you'll actually be able to buy the NFT if you're on the whitelist with your Ethereum. Um, and then 
typically once those sell out, then we'll have an art reveal, right? Where it's like everybody at the same time. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to work it. If it's going to be 24 hours later or 48 hours later after selling out. Typically, let's say August 10th comes and by August 11th, they're sold out. Then probably August 12th or 13th, you guys will be able to, will be able to look in your um, your wallet, your MetaMask wallet, and you'll be able to see the artwork that shows you the league and the draft pick that you're in. That's how it'll work with probably a couple, you know, some minor, minor, minor changes to what I just said. Um, Ramondre Stevenson, we have Melvin Gordon, Daniel Jones, Devin Singletary, Christian Kirk, Chase Claypool. Claypool's another guy that kind of interests me in this league type. James Cook, Robert Woods, Michael Carter, Alan Lazard, Mike Gusecki, Ronald Jones, Isaiah Spiller, Jared Goff. Spiller's another guy that I'm going to probably be uh, pining for pretty hard this year because I think he's got uh, a ton of fucking upside if Eckler were to go down, and I think he's a standalone guy that you could probably throw into your flex pretty early into the season. Uh, so Spiller I really, really like. Jared Goff, Tyler Lockett. Oh, we are bike up on the clock. Do we need another wide receiver? Ooh, how about Jamison Williams in this format? How about a little JMO action? Because he is going to miss a lot of the year, but he will be bike for the bash. He will be bike for the bash. I like me a little JMO. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a guy that y'all know I'm in love with already. Uh Kadarius Tony. We're gonna play it safe by taking Kadarius Tony. Said no one ever. I think Jamison Williams becomes a really interesting proposition in this in this uh, format, though. Wait, is this super flex? Of course, Liam. Always. Right on. Thanks for the answer. Familiar with Sleeper, et cetera. I was wondering if this, that Sleeper info was somehow also going to be tied to the NFC itself on the blockchain. Not sure how to word it. Uh, ignore me. Okay. I, I, uh, I get what you're saying. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that question. We'll have to look into that and get, get back to you. What's everybody guessing for Ike's lunch today? We're going to have to do that right after this draft. We're going to get this out fucking late. Do you know if there are any gas fees transferring from Coinbase to Coinbase wallet? Uh, that would be a question for Animal. I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I actually don't know. So I don't want to sound ignorant. I don't think there are gas fees, but Coinbase might have like a transaction fee itself, which is kind of like the same thing. We have Taco Bell, we got Wendy's, we got Sweet Green. I've had my guess that I've wanted to go with for a while now, but it hasn't been the right situation. Oh, okay. James Robinson could be kind of interesting coming back from injury. Rashad White is another player. These are the guys that I'm really looking for now because of the end of season upside. I'm, I'm going to go with my theory before, though, since Jameson Williams fell to me there and hope he's got like some sort of a Odell Beckham Jr.-esque end of rookie year run in him. So he'll be out for, I, I would assume we're not going to see Jameson on the field until like week eight. And then by week like 12, 13, he'll probably be up to like 70 to 80% of the uh, Lions snaps. And then we fucking bash, baby. Do you guys like my team six or did I mess up? Let's look at team six. Roast his ass. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's matrix rep. Burrow, Kelsey, Adams, Pitts, Brees Hall, J.K. Dobbins, Antonio Gibson, Juju. You basically drafted everyone on my do not draft list. You love to see it. I'm just kidding. Not everybody. Um, I personally don't like the Pitts Kelsey double stack here because this is not a tight end premium league. If it was tight end premium, that would be fine because you'd be able to throw flip Pitts in the flex play and he would get a little bit of an advantage over the other positions. But since it's not the case, I probably wouldn't have rolled that way. Whereas he said, uh, there's no gas fee. There's a small transaction fee, no more than like $5. We got stickies. We got Mexican. Is You can't just say Mexican, though. Anna, you know the rules. You know the fucking rules. You got to either pick a place or pick the specific food here. You know, they let me slide by getting a burrito on Cinco de Mayo. That's about the farthest we'll get with that. Yeah. Oh, sheesh. Sure to brush up for the... Oh, we got time, baby. Draft is going to be end of August. All right, uh, after JMO, we had Albert O, Christian Watson, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is going to be an interesting one. I wonder if we're going to know anything by then. Davis Mills, James Robinson. Robinson's also an interesting case. Like I took ETN because I love that dude, but Robinson is someone that could come back strong towards the end of the year. Really highly doubt we see him play or play well at all for the first like eight weeks, though. Baker, Baker going to Carolina. I haven't touched on Baker to Carolina, though. I should probably... Use my two cents here. Michael Gallup. I literally dropped the video like a few days before the news broke about how, you know, 
your league mates are fucking idiots if they take DJ Moore. And then Baker goes to Carolina. And uh, I'm not going to say I'm like overly excited about it, but I think you'd be ignorant to not be somewhat more excited about the Carolina players. Doesn't do anything for Christian McCaffrey realistically for me. Um, you know, people are going to try to get cute with Robbie Anderson. I don't really have, I can't imagine how anyone has interest in Robbie Anderson outside of, uh, his wife at this point, he's been really, really terrible for a long time. Um, they don't have a tight end of consequence, but DJ Moore definitely gets more. He's not someone that I'm actively fading anymore. He's someone that I feel like fits perfectly with Mayfield because May- Mayfield is a pretty accurate short and intermediate thrower. Um, and I think, you know, that's obviously where DJ Moore thrives. So I like it. I like it for DJ Moore. I'm not like crazy excited about it, but he's not he's not a full on fade anymore for me. How do you feel about AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones backfield situation? Find myself not willing to take Jones when I can just take Lenny. So I, I, I like both of them. I'm happy to own both of them this year. I'm going to make a video, I think, next week. Um, that touches on records that could be broken this year. And I don't know what the running back reception record for Green Bay is, but I have a ch- I have a feeling, a little gut feeling that Aaron Jones might flirt with it this year. And I'm on the clock, so why don't I flirt with the fucking draft board? I'm gl- okay, so I got five wide receivers right. I only have two running backs. It's kind of disgusting. That's a lie. I have four running backs. Never mind. Cool. Feeling better about my life. Do we grab a third quarterback? I probably would grab a third quarterback here, but let's go with a little bit of upside play. Let's go with Rashad. Let's have some fucking fun, boys and girls. Let's have a little bit of excitement in our lives. Love Rashad White. Nobody was higher on, on him than than me in February, March. Then he, he, he lands in Tampa Bay, and it just doesn't add up where he's going to get a lot of play time as a rookie with Tom Brady and behind Leonard Fournette, who's got that fat new contract. But anything could happen by the end of the year, man. That's kind of the slogan for the big dog bash. I'm just going to take everybody. Anyone I take, I'm just going to be like, yeah, I don't really got analysis. But listen, anything could happen by the end of the year, man. And then you can't say shit back to me about that. Yeah, so with Aaron Jones, I I think there's a a real chance that we just see this entire offense run through Jones and Dylan, mainly Dylan on the ground and Aaron Jones playing, you know, 30 to 35 percent of his snaps from the slot. Like we saw with Eckler a bunch of years back when Eckler had. Eckler fucking went nuts with like uh, 108 targets, 92 catches. He ran so many of his routes from the slot that year and played most of his snaps from the slot. I could, I could see a world where Aaron Jones gets 90 to 100 targets this year and just goes nuts because of that. Hmm. I wonder what the ideal strategy for like roster uh, construction is for this fucking league. Damn, I'm I'm down bad on uh, tight ends and probably quarterback. Okay, little Mitch action. Anyone believe in Mitch? Besides Animal, uh, I'll take Mitch. He's probably the last starting quarterback left here or one that's going to get you above 11 points per game. He's, he's a runner. He's got fantastic weapons. He stinks, but you know those two pieces could probably take you far enough. I probably need to start grabbing a couple tight ends as well, but we've got 20 rounds, so we've got some time. Adam, I think uh, Terrace Marshall's time is come and gone. I think he's not a player that I would like to draft at all. Possibly meeting Miles Sanders next Saturday. Should I ask him why they don't give him goal line work? Man, he's got my head in such a blender. I don't know what I would ask Miles Sanders right now. I would just ask him why he hurt me so badly. Why he done did that to me. Yeah, it'd be like, yo, why Boston Scott's like 20 pounds lighter than you. Why the fuck are you not getting the goal line work? You piece of shit. Is there a way to set up our own mock drafts with the same scoring system as the bash? Yes, very easy. Uh, I mean, the if you go to bigdogbash.com forward slash, just go to bigdogbash.com and then league rules is listed on the top and you'll see the, the roster settings and just make a mock draft on Sleeper with uh, those roster settings. After I went Mitch, we had Drew Locke, Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick's a nice little pick too. I think there's there's a world we uh, we live in in, a, in an alternate universe where Tim Patrick just scores like eight touchdowns this year because Russ is the g- a goat. Raheem Mostert, like that. J.D. McKissick, Devontae Parker, Alec Pierce, Marlon Mack, DJ Shark. We're getting into ugly territory here. Real ugly. I feel like you have to get lucky with handcuffs and just hope their starters get hurt for the bash. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, there, it's 1,200 people. Well, there's going to be one fucking winner overall, so it's going to take a ton of luck. Same thing with like the Scott Fishbowl, man. It's just... It's just, you know, you're, you're along for the ride and hope a few things break your way. Preferably the ankle of the starting running back that you have the backup for. 
As a Bears fan, Mitch is my guy. He can be good with Tomlin coaching. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Anil said in Discord, he's on duty now because everyone's back on Sutton. I'll gladly stay on Sutton because of it. Uh, well, I mean, it, there was a gap between Judy and Sutton where it was like it was definitely worth taking Sutton. But if the hype on Sutton gets to the point where he's like a round or two earlier than Judy, straight up, I'd rather own Sutton. But if if Sutton's going way way earlier than uh, than Judy is, then yeah, I might I might start looking at Judy instead. I just want one of the wide receivers on that team of Judy and Sutton. Just give me one of them. I might just fade tight ends into the year twenty twenty seven. Do you have any wide receivers we like? Uh, Van Jeff's all right. David Bell. Good job. Osborne's fine. It's ugly all across the board. Yeah, I'm probably going to look at tight ends here. Uh, let's see. Gronk's retired. Tyler Higby. Robert Tunyon. Robert Tunyon could play a little bit of a role now that he's back. And uh, we're not going to do that, though. Golden Joku, even though I probably, if I had more time, I would have went with either Ingram or Austin Hooper. You guys know why from yesterday's video. I talked about those guys as some post-hype guys mark ingram at the 15 9 is actually kind of interesting because kamar is going to miss six games what they have on that roster right now is not a lot of goodness i really like the rookie abram smith out of baylor however i don't think we'll ever we're going to know before the season starts who's actually worth owning in uh New Orleans as the running back, but that's why you watch the preseason games, man. That's why you get the snap counts for the for the guys behind Kamara to know who's running with the ones. Right now, they have Ingram, Dwayne Washington, Tony Jones Jr., Devon Zigbo, and Abram Smith. So that's that's definitely a camp battle to keep an eye on for this. He's grabbing two quarterbacks in the beginning and overrated strategy in Superflex. I think it is. I have been on the side of uh, making sure you get two good starters, but I don't think they need to be elite. Um. I think a lot of people make that mistake where they jump right in and think they need to fill the two quarterback slots. I think going with early quarterbacks and super flex makes way more sense in dynasty, but in redraft, I'm, I'm not, uh, as long as you have someone that's going to put up 17, 18 points a game, like when I got Matt Ryan in the six pick or six round or whatever, that's fine. Cause he's going to give you probably as much as, you know, like Kirk cousins or Derek Carr who just got picked two rounds earlier. Obviously, I, I'd probably rather have them straight up, but the difference is not significant. So as long as you get two starters that you're comfortable with, that's fine. Let's see. Gerald Everett, Evan Ingram. I'll probably grab another tight end. I'll go with Ingram here. Can't send links in Discord. Anyway, we can set up our own mock draft. Uh, I saw people doing that. I don't remember how they were doing I think Animal's been setting up a bunch of mock drafts too, like once every hour, every other hour, or some shit like that. So we'll try to post them as often as we can. I think you can DM people the links, though. So we're, we're like, really, really, because the NFT space is f a bunch of fuckboys, we don't like to... Um, we, we're not allowing people to post links and all that stuff because that's exactly how scams happen. That's exactly how you get your NFT taken away. So, unfortunately, we have to err on the side of caution with those things. So do the 100 winners of the individual league split the $5,000? Yeah, so the way it's going to work is... I mean, we're not we're not literally just like selling. We're giving you fifty dollars, and we're not going to like send you fifty dollars in an envelope to those people. We're saying that they're going to split the equivalent of what a grand prize would be. And again, like the better we do in terms of like the upfront sales with this thing, the more the the prize are going to be like lucrative. So, what I was thinking for for the one hundred winners of the individual leagues, um, I would like to send out like a special NFT to just the hundred people that moved on, as well as in each round of it. Uh, an exclusive piece of merch that only the 100 league winners got something like really high quality that we do in house and we only make 100 of them send them to you guys I think it'd be fucking cool as hell I also want to have if you make the 100 I, I'd like to do a live event like a real live event here in maybe it's in New York maybe we haven't decided on what it is um, but I would love to do like a live event that's either over the course of a weekend or like one night or something like going out where we like rent out a bar we rent out some place and the only way you can get into it the only ticket entry into it is having the um is having the ticket uh it's having the 100 league winner nft to get into it so it's it's tough for us to actually put into place the money that people are going to be winning in this because we want to add stuff that is valuable outside of just like financially like i'm sure by the time the season ends we'll have thought of like two three four more things that we want to add on top of that for the prizes but that's you know that's what it kind of is to build a brand. It's like you guys are putting trust in us to know that when the time comes, we'll we'll be doing the right thing. We'll we'll be over delivering on the value that we give you guys. It won't all be monetary monetary value, right? A lot of you guys want that, of course, but we want to be able to add things that give you access or exclusivity to different events or different people or 
you know, whether that's like fucking FaceTime calls or that's getting on the podcast with us or that's, you know, any of those type of things. Okay, so after Ingram, we had Hooper, Devin Duvernay, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett, Odell Beckham Jr. God damn, you are something else. Swiger. Hassan Haskins, John Mechie, Hayden Hurst, Corey Davis, Rob Gronkowski, Nico Collins. Let's see. What do I have right now on my roster? Let's see. What do you guys think about the? I actually really, really fuck with my team right now. I think it's a pretty strong team in this. So we have Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan as the quarterbacks. Dalvin Cook, Travis Etienne, CeeDee Lamb, T. Higgins, Rashad Bateman, Zach Ertz, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson, and Tony, Jameson, Rashad White, Mitch, David Njoku, Evan Ingram on the bench. I like that squad. I really do. We have, what, four running backs? We have five running backs. We probably need to grab another wide receiver. Let's take a flyer on William Fuller and see where he lands. He's got to get signed by someone before the season starts. Has to happen. Setting the roster change doesn't re-rank the players like the one you're doing now because the scoring system is there to way to do that as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so within the when you're setting the league settings, make the roster the way it is, but then go back to like the, the normal – where you're starting the league and instead of where it says like half PPR, it'll have like 10 different options, half PPR, full PPR dynasty. Do the, um, do click two quarterback. So do two quarterback instead of like half PPR PPR. So if you go two quarterback, it will adjust the rankings to super flex NFC East predictions. Uh, giants, not going to be good. Washington, not going to be good. Philly, Philly could be good for sure. Uh, it'll be a, a cool battle between Dallas and Philly. I think I think I like Dallas more. I think they're more established as a team, have, have less risk. Time to go get another aggressively average mark down here in the Keys. They don't make any of them besides that down there, I don't think. Peace, boys. Catch me in another mock later time on Discord. Later, Ricky. Later, Rick. After I took Will Fuller, we had Brian Robinson, Cameron Brait, uh, Dearness Johnson, Revan Jordan, Kenyon Drake, Julio Jones. Julio Jones uh, is probably a good pick there because of the report last week that he's the favorite to sign with the Packers. That would be interesting. John Ross, what are you doing? Oh, it's Justin Ross. Either I mean, it just as bad. Oh, I'm on the clock. Let's go. So I got Keontae Ingram. I'm a really big fan of Keontae Ingram out there in Arizona. It's crazy. I'm a I'm such a big fan of everyone except James Conner. Um, Keontae Ingram, super talented, six round rookie out of USC. He is. Six foot, maybe even bigger than that, 220 pounds. So he's got the three-down workhorse size. He's a good pass catcher. He's an elusive player. Does a lot of good things. Uh, he's kind of like, you know, Benjamin, just bigger. So if something happens to James Conner, I'd like him to, to have a pivotal role in this offense. After Ingram, we had Deonta Foreman, A.J. Green, Trey Sermon. Sermon Steen? Wow, you're just grabbing all the San Fran backs, huh, Rye Dog? You got Sermon. You got – oh, no, most are on Miami now. I'm an idiot. Don't mind me, sir. Uh, let's see. Oh, nothing more. All right. We're getting into round 19. Logan Thomas, Jimmy G, CJ Ozuma. This is where I think really tapping into preseason is going to help a lot of people. Like, you know, Paris Campbell. I've heard some reports. Where is he running right now? I like guys like KJ Hamler who have that late season upside. Uh, Paris Campbell, I think, has some of that. I think... Uh, Brian Edwards might be like the actual wide receiver two in Atlanta as well. Not something I love, but he's a guy that can progress. Good pick with Hamler. Running backs. Who could take over a big situation? Oh, the running backs are disgusting. Why is no one drafting Sammy Watkins? Sexy, why didn't you draft Sammy Watkins? Yeah, let's go with uh let's go with, let's go P Cam. A little P Cam action. A little not not like P, not like a P camera. I like watching you pee, but all right, I'll be quiet. Chris Evans. I like Chris Evans a little bit. Adam Troutman, Robbie Anderson, Dontrell Hilliard. I like Hilliard as well. Kendrick Bourne, Tyler Huntley, Isaiah McKenzie. Seven wide receivers, four running backs, three tight ends. I think I took two. Did I not take three quarterbacks? Oh, I, I took Mitch too. Should we just fuck around and take Malik Willis, the god? Everyone else stinks. I don't hate Boston Scott. I feel like he's perennially fucking underrated as well. Let's go with B. Scott. He's a baller. He's a player. He's a playmaker. Shepard and Slayton rarely get picked, even with 20-man rosters. I think one of them could have a solid season. Yeah, I don't know, dude. No, like, they didn't have a single pass catcher with a good season last year. Now you have Galladay and Kadarius Tony as the guys. She Shepard's coming off a, an, uh, an Achilles tear. Darius Slayton's a kind of a one-man pony or a one-trick pony. He's a one-man trick pony. And it's also still Daniel Jones, so I, I, I'm probably not going to invest into the Giants 
passing offense. But but do you, homie. Do the fucking you. That's what this league's all about. Who knows? Darius Slayton could be a big dog bash league winner. And that is about to wrap up this draft. Uh, you could see my final draft right here. This, this little schlot. Dalvin Cook, Russell Wilson, CeeDee Lamb, T. Higgins, Travis Etienne, Matt Ryan, Rashad Bateman, Zach Ertz, Chase Edmonds, Ramondre Stevenson, Kadarius Tony, Jameson Williams, Rashad White, Mitch Trubisky, David Njoku, Evan Ingram, Will Fuller, Keontae Ingram, Paris Campbell, Boston Scott. I don't think I see a single miss on that draft. Not a single miss. Top 15 at their position, every single one of them. All right, let's put my ugly fucking face back on the screen. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. This was a 20-teamer, so we sat here and yelled for a while. Um, we'll be doing mock drafts like this every single Saturday going forward. All right? So make sure you subscribe. More importantly, go check out more info on the Big Dog Bash if you are interested. All those will be linked down below, all the necessary information. We also have a YouTube channel if you just go search the Big Dog Bash with informational videos on what the fucking NFT is, why we decided to make this an NFT, how to create uh, a MetaMask wallet and get onto the whitelist, the pre-order, whatever the waiting list for it. Um, so we've got everything covered, hopefully. If you have any more questions, obviously join the Discord for the Big Dog Bash and we will personally help you out one-on-one. -on -one. That is it. I love y'all for uh, hanging around, and hopefully I'll see y'all in thy bash. Skirt.